Ladies and gentlemen, this next bout has been brought to you by the Medicine Hat Lodge, Four Star Resort, and the largest entertainment complex in Medicine Hat. This next fight is a welterweight contest scheduled for three five minute rounds. Please welcome to the cage to fight in the blue corner, Ryan Quinn. Coming down to the cage now at fight night two, Medicine Hat, Ryan Quinn, who will be taking on Mac McGrath. Jeremy, these two fighters, very elite level Canadian welterweights, trying to keep impressive streaks going. Well, and Ryan Quinn is one of those fighters that flies under the radar. Matt McGrath is a name that gets, you know, noticed by pretty much everybody in, uh, in mixed martial arts. But Ryan Quinn has gone under the radar out of American top team, uh, an extremely tough fighter. He's had impressive wins in his career, coming off an a great win by Naka in the third round against Brett O'Terry, and uh, that was just a few months ago. So you, you see that he has so, that knockout power. He also has wins by decision, wins by uh, by submission, so definitely a three-phase fighter. He can strike, he can grapple, and uh, he can do it with some solid jiu-jitsu. Coming down with a record of 12 and 6 and 1 and uh, 2 and 2 in his last four fights. I asked him what he needs to do to be successful here tonight and get away uh, and come away with another victory. Said he needs to be very aggressive to find and then exploit weaknesses in his opponent's game. We talk about the chess match and it, it, it's it's cliche to be sure, Ryan, but MMA is all about movement and, and trying when I do this, my opponent does this, so this is how I counter that. And you will see them try and set them up. They'll throw out jabs from distances that they know aren't gonna land, just to see what the reaction to the jab movement is. Just to see what the reaction to the footwork of, of a cross is. So these top level guys don't necessarily look for just what their opponent's doing and countering it, but setting their opponent up so that they can set up their own counters. Please welcome to the cage to Fighter in the red corner, Matt, the belt captor, McGrath. Matt McGrath now making his way down to the cage, 18 and eight. Jeremy, as a professional, including an eight fight win streak with seven title fights or defenses in that stretch. Matt McGrath, the consensus number one welterweight in the country of Canada is going to make his fight night debut here tonight. He has not lost a fight on, since 2012. Four years of dominance in this weight class. He is the top level fighter in this country, perhaps one of the top pound for pound fighters in this country. Uh, in, in, taking in names like Jesse Arnett, taking in names like Tanner Poser. These are top level guys. Matt McGrath looking to make a statement against Ryan Quinn. He says, look, I'm ready for the next level. I have been for a while. I have to make that statement here tonight against Ryan Quinn. Yeah, and had uh, several fights uh, over the last little while. Also uh, drop out, some canceled bouts, looking to get in and get those fights underway and is really looking forward to stepping in the cage tonight against uh, Ryan Quinn. Says that despite his age and Jeremy, 36 years old, still expects a call to that next level. Looking to get to the UFC, looking to put together a performance in a fight like this to maybe get that uh, catapult into the sport's highest levels. Well, and he's got all the tools that you need to be a top level fighter. He's a black belt in judo, which is something that very few fighters are in mixed martial arts. Judo is a very underutilized uh, martial art in mixed martial arts, and it's such a dangerous tool because in the situations up against the cage, in the clinch, the throws are so dangerous from there. He also is an excellent practitioner and crazy jiu-jitsu, so if he could take you down with those, those dynamic throws that really put an exclamation point in the judge's mind and you can have that good jiu-jitsu game you're set up as a great fighter we take a look at the Taylor Tech 36 year old for Matt McGrath 29 for Ryan Quinn you see the records there great experience for both of these fights this is going to be an excellent fight McGrath will be looking to step in the cage, says he expects a grinding style from Ryan Quinn, who says, uh, Quinn said he used to describe himself as a wrestler who did MMA, now he's 
said he's an MMA fighter who excels at wrestling. So Ryan Quinn has put the skills together, and Matt McGrath will put those skills to the test today as he steps in the cage uh, for fight night for the first time. Well, Ryan Quinn training at American Top Team makes him a very tough competitor because you have so many top-level fighters training with you every day. And when you're training with top guys every single day, it just makes you such a better fighter. And you see Matt McGrath taking his last trip around. A nice touch of gloves there. This is going to be an entertaining fight here at the welterweight division. Two top welterweights in the world fighting off here at fight night to Medicine Hat. Now for our official introductions, we'll head inside the cage to Ryan Ventura. Ladies and gentlemen, this next fight is a welterweights contest scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Introducing first the fighter in the blue corner. This man stands at five feet, eight inches tall. He weighed in at 170.4 pounds. With a professional record of 12 wins, six losses, one draw. Representing American top team from Coconut Creek, Florida, USA, Ryan Quinn. And his opponent in the red corner. This man stands at five feet, 10 inches tall. He weighed in at 170.1 pounds. With a professional record of 18 wins, eight losses. Representing Wolf Run MMA from Charlottetown, PEI, Matt, the belt collector, McGrath. Matt McGrath and Ryan Quinn will meet in the center of the cage. McGrath coming out of the red corner in the black and red trunks, the black shorts with the American Top Team logo. Coming out of the blue corner is Ryan Quinn. Touch glove center of the cage, and we are underway here at Fight Night Medicine Hat 2. We'll see a, a lot more methodical approach from both of these fighters, I'd imagine, Jeremy. Nice counter there from Ryan Quinn, catching the high kick. Matt McGrath not bringing that kick back down to the ground, but there's a nice stiff jab from McGrath. Ryan Quinn taking the shot. McGrath able to defend. You keep seeing that big overhand right from Ryan Quinn when they engage. Jeremy it landed a couple times so far, but McGrath now has him up against the cage, has his back. Nice knee to the face there, but Quinn able to use that to recover and get himself a better position up against the cage. The overhand right is the wrestler's best weapon because the way that it's set up is your opponent will expect you to come in on a shot based on your footwork for the overhand right. There's a great takedown from Ryan Quinn. The footwork that comes for the overhead right is the same as a takedown. So the rest, the fighter on the opposite side will sprawl back to defend the takedown and eat that overhand right. That's why it's so effective. Nice pass there into half mount now, or half guard rather, of Matt McGrath, Ryan Quinn on top. Has a bit of a head and arm here, but not, not much in the way of danger there. Just a patient position by Ryan Quinn. It's all about reserving the energy, and here's an arm triangle position, but obviously not in the right spot. You want to be on the same side as your arm triangle, but Ryan Quinn, now with the guard open, will look to try and pass and get into this mount position against Matt McGrath. Ryan Quinn on top of Matt McGrath. McGrath trying to work his way out, look, looking to use a wall walk to get free, can't do it. Again, that wrestling base from Ryan Quinn proving valuable up against the cage. And when a wrestler is on top, it's, it's extremely difficult to get off just because they have years and years of training and just maintaining a top position. And it's just something that gets worked over and over again in their entire career. So it's natural. It, it doesn't require thought to stay in a good position when you're top for a wrestler. Again, Quinn has been on top now for a while on McGrath. McGrath. Doing a good job of defending. Really hasn't taken much in the way of damage on the bottom yet, Jeremy. Both of these fighters very adept on the ground, trying to find a way to uh, 
exploit a different weakness from the other. And uh, back in the guard now of Matt McGrath. Quinn trying to pass there. McGrath doing a good job. And now Quinn back into the half guard. Well, when you look at what Matt McGrath is doing is he's, he's transitioning and you see the shrimping there as he's trying to work in that left leg underneath to get the butterfly guard, just a half butterfly guard. And each time he does get a butterfly guard, it forces Ryan Quinn to deal with the situation, readjust his weight so he doesn't get swept in that position. So good work by Matt McGrath in just making something different to limit Ryan Quinn's ability to feel comfortable in this top position. However, for Matt McGrath, you don't want to have Ryan Quinn on top of you for this entire round because it's just going to end up with you on the wrong end of a 10-9 round. Yeah, absolutely. Now punches coming from Ryan Quinn on top. Again, trying to find a position here, Jeremy, where he can maybe land a little bit more damage. Very effective guard from Matt McGrath on the bottom. And again, you'd expect a guy that hadn't lost any fights in the last four years to have effective defense. You'd expect him to have effective everything. Now he's trying to find a hole. Quinn unable to really explode out of this position, Jeremy, now. And again, right back into the guard of McGrath. Postured up, landed a couple punches now from the top. Again, staying busy, giving no reason for the referee to stand them up. Good top position. There's a good left hand. Probably the first solid left hand that's landed from Ryan Quinn. Now working, got in back into that side control. This is such great positioning here from Ryan Quinn as he continues to just... Like you said, Ryan, stay busy on top and just keep it in the mind of the judges that you're doing something to win the fight. There's another pass attempt by Ryan Quinn. He's almost free now, but Matt McGrath working in and slipping into that butterfly again to be able to stop him from getting into the full mount. 30 seconds to go here in the first of three scheduled rounds between these two welterweights. And now the referee standing them up, saying that there hadn't been enough action. Crowd appreciating the stand-up, but just 10 seconds left. Can't imagine there's going to be anything that cost Ryan Quinn the first round here. Good work by McGrath, just trying to say I'm in this fight, but a nice round here. Good work by McGrath, just trying to say I'm in this fight, but a nice uh, left hand landed by Ryan Quinn. So Ryan Quinn getting set for round two action with Matt McGrath. Again, McGrath out of the red corner in the red trunks, the black shorts for Ryan Quinn, who spent the bulk of the first round on top in this fight. And look for Matt McGrath to change his, his technique a bit and immediately goes for the takedown, lands a good knee, but there's a nice counter takedown by Ryan Quinn. That sprawl was excellent from Matt McGrath catching the knee on the way up. So you see the difference in the technique immediately instead of going for striking and opening up the, the grappling, use the grappling to set up the striking. So again, McGrath trying to push the pace a little bit in the first minute here of round number two big uppercut there and followed by a knee as quinn looked for the shot mcgrath answered but quinn not to be denied does secure the takedown here up against the cage this is a big sequence right now here as Ma Matt McGrath needs to keep Ryan Quinn from getting a dominant position because it, Ryan Quinn showed that he can keep that dominant position for the majority of a round. So Matt McGrath needs to do a lot here to be able to defend it. And he is doing by elevating the hands, breaking the grip. This is a great shot by Matt McGrath using what he has. And now an interesting position as he's got Ryan Quinn's arm in a very dangerous position, kind of a modified Kimura there. And now he gets top position off of it. So excellent job by Matt McGrath showing those skills, not only in defending the takedown but using it to his advantage to uh, attempt a submission well and you can see yeah as uh, as you mentioned jeremy using that modified kimura forcing ryan quinn over and now having himself a dominant position with three and a half minutes to go and after a round one that saw him mostly on his back uh now we've got uh, matt mcgrath doing a good job from the top here to try and stay busy one in the half guard and a good butterfly guard right back from ryan quinn so 
Quinn showing that he has the chops on the ground, just the same that Matt McGrath does in defending it and trying to limit the damage that he can do on the top. Shots to the side there from McGrath on top. And you can see Quinn trying to hold that one arm out, not allow any kind of offense. Just tying McGrath up. McGrath postures up, lands a punch, now backs off. Needs to watch that up kick. And pouncing on him is McGrath, but here's another takedown attempt from Ryan Quinn. You see him desperately trying to get his hands together. He has them together now and immediately on the takedown. So as he's working his hands through and trying to push them forward, the second they got linked, that gives you an indication, I've got this opportunity, uses the butt as a shelf. Great takedown by Ryan Quinn. Now trying to defend from the bottom again is McGrath. Quinn back on top as he has been. Coach Muhammad Lal calling for uh, calling for punches from the ground, and there's a big elbow. That one staggered Quinn. Mama, Quinn is blinking heavily, and Vierne Vilal is right in there, and he's called a timeout because of the mouth guard coming out. And uh, we're going to talk quietly here because that was a veteran move by Ryan Quinn. He was stunned, and that mouth guard came out a little uh, li lighter than it could have. Mouth guard did come out, giving him a moment. You can see a cut on the bridge of the nose, but that was a big elbow. Oh. <laughs> You, you can say it was a veteran move. I was giving credit to Ryan Quinn for a veteran move, but it was Matt McGrath the whole time. <laughs> they, they handed it out to Quinn's corner to get it washed. So uh, some uh, sportsmanship being shown there. But right back to the ground, this fight goes. Dangerous position now here as Matt McGrath has this top position and he likes to work from here and try and get in behind as he does right there. Good spin by Ryan Quinn, Matt McGrath has the weight good work by ryan quinn slipping out and you can see now an oma plata attempt by matt mcgrath we said these guys were top fighters in the world they're proving it right now this back and forth action is phenomenal ryan quinn back on top after that exchange which saw a couple different submissions look like they were about to take shape before breaking off now popping through the card of uh matt mcgrath is ryan quinn and now you can see Quinn trying to find damage, trying to, oh, and a big punch from the bottom from McGrath, follows that up with an elbow, and that one did damage to Ryan Quinn on top, who has taken some heavy strikes here in this round. That technique is phenomenal. He creates the space, and he sets it up as he's pushing Ryan Quinn away. He knows Ryan Quinn wants to get back to positive head position. There's a nice elbow from McGrath. So he pushes the head away, and when Ryan Quinn comes back to positive head position, the elbow where the fist is in the way, excellent technique from the bottom by Matt McGrath. 45 seconds left in round number two of three rounds between McGrath and Quinn. And, and what a performance here in round number two from both fighters, Jeremy. This round substantially closer, although I think you've got to look at the, the strikes and the damage done by Matt McGrath. But Ryan Quinn has had the better of the ground game. This one going to be very interesting look on the judges' scorecards. And this is going to only help Ryan Quinn's case trying to find a way to maybe perhaps tie it up in the minds of the judges to, to do some work. Just short time remaining and Ryan Quinn doing everything he can to put into the mind of the judges that he won the round. But like you mentioned, Ryan, it's going to be a close one to call and we are going to a final round as we should. These are two top level fighters and uh, the third round fireworks are expected. So we get set for a third and potentially deciding round here in uh, fight night, a medicine hat. As uh, they touch gloves in the third and final round. McGrath again in the black and red, the all black for Ryan Quinn. The dapper mustache. When you could, and time being called, I don't necessarily know why. Just a a glove like issue an issue that some of the tape has come out from under the glove some of the gauze that looks like so they're gonna get some scissors and cut that out I don't think that either fighter really I sometimes when stuff like this happens one fighter has a cardio advantage against another I think both these guys are in such great shape that this is just you know I don't think there's advantage either person in, in getting their win back and uh, good good spot by Jaron Falal because you wouldn't want something like that to affect the fight all right, back underway. 
And you mentioned, Jeremy, both of these fighters with good cardio. Some heavy breaths, though, coming from Ryan Quinn during that break. Any opportunity to get your oxygen in freely without having your opponent uh, risking a shot is a good opportunity, and Ryan Quinn took it there. There's some good strikes back and forth from these guys, and the sweat just flying off when, every time a strike is landed. Yeah, big swings from both fighters in those last couple of exchanges. Coaches out of Quinn's corner calling for him to keep going forward, to not give up any advantage he may have had earlier in the fight. That one got through. Tough to get takedowns at this stage of the fight just because of the amount of sweat from the, from the two fighters. But again, that's what that uh, locking the hands under, under the butt does as a takedown. But uh, good birth by McGrath getting this, this position. Now getting back out, thinking that he's getting the better of the striking. So trying to take advantage of that here in round three. Nice jab by Quinn. Quinn throwing it forward, looking at a switch kick. And then a front kick was McGrath trying to time Quinn's entry. Both fighters now trying to put the finishing touches on the fight. That may see a round, a, a round by round split here, Jeremy. First round, Quinn, second round, McGrath. And again, big overhand right coming down. And there, a left hook also landing. Matt McGrath giving the, you know, come on, bring it motion. There's three minutes left. If, if I'm Matt McGrath, I really want to push the pace in this third round because I can't guarantee that the judges don't see it for Ryan Quinn. Here's a good time takedown by Matt McGrath. Has the back of, of Ryan Quinn, but Quinn doing an excellent job staying up off his feet and a good parting left hand from Matt McGrath. Again, continuing to push forward. Both fighters throwing. No quit in either one of these men as we enter the back half of the third round. Nice lead left hand from, from Matt McGrath and a nice left jab from McGrath. Just trying to keep Ryan Quinn at range. But again, he needs to remain busier of the two fighters, uh, in my opinion. He definitely needs to win round three. Well, you know that absolutely 100% Ryan Quinn run one round one. I believe so as well. At, at that point, it becomes a decision on round two and, and who finished it off. So if you're Matt McGrath, you know that you, own, you have to win round three because you know you lost round one. At this point, now pushing him up against the cage, trying to be dominant, maybe secure a takedown. It, it, it can only help Matt McGrath as he looks towards finishing this fight. There's an attempt at an inside leg trip by Matt McGrath, which is a great technique. The problem when your opponent is up against the cage is there's no room to finish it. So Matt McGrath with some nice technique. There's a good double leg from Ryan Quinn. Nice time. But immediately, Matt McGrath lift those hands up, get them underneath the body. And uh, again, Quinn continuing to try to get a takedown to try and secure top position. But Matt McGrath able to suss out these takedowns. Yeah, it was a nice sprawl there from McGrath. McGrath trying to push forward. Quinn trying to put the emphasis on the round. That a nice right hand that got through from McGrath. Another sprawl from the Canadian here, Jeremy. It seems like Quinn a little far away when he starts his shot, and that allows McGrath time to get in and get his, his work done. And if he can continue to put this... this the, the takedowns, this also shows the judges here trying to win the fight. That's a successful takedown. And again, the difference between that one, like you mentioned, Ryan, is the space. He was still in in a good, solid position and needs now to get busy because Matt McGrath did get the better of the striking in the top position. So perhaps trying to steal a round needs to get a good flurry here to steal this round away with just 40 seconds remaining. So 40 seconds to go with Ryan Quinn on top. McGrath has got to get loose here, Jeremy, if he wants a shot at convincing the judges the third round belongs to him. Quinn on top, as he was uh, through most of the first round and parts of the second, and trying to finish this fight off and get a victory against a man with an eight-fight win streak, a man that hasn't lost in four years. Ryan Quinn trying to finish this fight off. And with 15 seconds left, they're hearing it from the fans here as uh, they know that they've been treated to an excellent performance between these two welterweights. Matt McGrath trying to get up, trying to end the fight not on his back. And he did a good job there with the attempted takedown, but close rounds to call. This one's going to a decision, and I have no idea which way this fight is going. No, this one uh, definitely going to be up to the judges as uh, we get to uh, the end of three rounds here. 
but uh, uh, we know that round one went to Ryan Quinn. We don't know what happened with rounds two or three at this point. And as we take a look at some of the replay action here. That's a great uh, counter by Ryan Quinn, taking the advantage that Matt McGrath really wasn't putting that kick out other to range find. And Ryan Quinn taking advantage of some good knees by Matt McGrath. This has been a nice shot. That's what was happening throughout the entire fight, is just a setup and just one punch landing. And it didn't seem that any of those punches were necessarily damaging Ryan Quinn. I find the only real shot that damaged either fighter throughout the round was the big elbow by Matt McGrath in the second round, standing right before a kind of mouth guard gate that went on that we didn't know who it belonged to. But uh, a great fight from top level, guys. And, uh, you know, again, going to the judge's decision here, uh, this is going to be a tough... Either a fighter is going to be happy to win this one, but I think uh, the fighter that loses is going to, uh, you know... Be, feel a little bit unjustified that they lost well and, and maybe see some opportunities lost i think uh you know when when you look at this either one of these fighters if they weren't able to uh, secure a victory here may look at it as an opportunity lost because uh, this fight uh, razor thin margins in the second and third round so if matt mcgrath comes out the winner here ryan quinn will certainly uh, have to look at his performance and wonder what could have been on the other side if uh, ryan quinn is the victor here matt mcgrath will have to look back at that first round where he was unable to get free as what cost him this fight and cost him his eight fight win streak just waiting on the official judges scorecards to get tallied up before uh, our voice of fight night we'll head into the cage and announce our winner here just uh, doing some final tabulating this one obviously a difficult fight to score as uh, the math taking a little bit longer than maybe you're used to seeing but that's because this fight may be a little closer than you also expect to see make sure uh, you uh, check out fight night uh, the uh, jesse bed or jesse arnett Johnny Bedford fight postponed due to an unfortunate in injury to Johnny Bedford here today, but they will be back in December or January rather uh, January our next fight night event and uh, we have uh, got that fight booked for that time So we will see that fight in January uh, We will be hearing from both of those gentlemen later in the broadcast tonight both Jesse Arnett and Johnny Bedford will be appearing in the fight night cage tonight uh, as we uh, await the official decision here and uh, and again make sure you check that fight out at our next event in January it looks like the official decision is just about in Ryan Ventura headed into the cage with that decision and we will now throw to Ryan to find out who's won ladies and gentlemen I have your judges scorecard Judge Adam Taup scored the fight 29, 28, Quinn. Judge Michael Peterson scored the fight 29, 28, McGrath. And judge number three has scored the fight 29, 28. For your winner, by split decision, the fighter in the blue corner, Ryan Quinn. Ryan Quinn is your winner. Round one proves to be decisive in a razor thin margin. Both fighters getting one judge seeing it their way 29 28. But in the end, it's Ryan Quinn Ryan, winning by split here. decision. He'll be with Jeremy. So you've got a, a fighter, uh, your opponent, who hasn't lost in four years. You come in against a tough Matt McGrath. What goes through your mind when you start that fight? Nothing goes through my mind. I've been doing this since I was 13 years old. In wrestling, I bumped up three weight classes to fight the toughest son of a bitch. And I do it in MMA. It's not going to stop. And that's what I do. You dominated the first round once you took him down to the ground. You were able to stay busy. You won that one. You ate a pretty big elbow in the second round. It cut you on the nose there. How are you able to blast through that and, and push through that situation? Just put it behind you. Keep moving forward. He underestimated me with his uh, ground defense. He was very strong. Uh, his stance was a lot better than I, I planned on on the feet. Uh, he was tough to open up. Strong guy. Uh, great fight. 
Talk about your team, American Top Team, one of the best teams in mixed martial arts in the world. Talk about how having a camp like that helps you as a fighter. That's my security blanket, baby. We train with the best guys in the world on a daily basis. I know that no matter what he does, no disrespect to him, I've seen better of it at the gym, and that's what I'm gonna see on Monday when I go back. He's a top level fighter in this country, and this is a big win for you. What does this mean for your career? That's win number 14, and I just keep going forward. That's what that means. Give it up for him one more time. Your winner, Ryan Quinn.